Harvesting. The process of gathering grains, seeds or fruits on maturity of a crop is called harvesting. Correct. So what do you, what, according to you, Akshat, what is harvesting? According to you. When the crop has fully grown and it is uh, like uh, um, mm -hmm. pretty mature for uh, consu uh, consuming, mm -hmm. so they harvest how is the crop mm -hmm. and uh, they harvest the crop and store it and uh, after some time they sell it. Correct. So basically, do you think one same uh, same plant or the same crop can be harvested multiple times? Is it possible? Or is it that, you know, at one fine morning, you just decide that it's matured now? So no, complete. Plant no, everything no. that's there, harvest everything, and then, you know, the crop, if it dies, so it's okay. Is it something like that? No, ma'am. We have to harvest them at a particular time. Okay, no, what I meant is that can a crop be harvested multiple times? Akshat. No, I still didn't understand multiple times. Multiple times? Yes, means you, Multiple times means, you know, you uh, pluck the crop, you know, now, gather the grains now, and maybe after 15, 20 days you again gather, after one month you again gather. No, is that possible? Multiple times? That's not possible. But at the same day, Hmm. Or same day or the next day because it might uh, like uh, the, uh, your, my some bugs might uh, come or something. Hmm. Uh, See what happens in case of a tomato plant? Do you think all the tomatoes will come out at the same time and all the uh, tomatoes no. will ripen at the same time? No, no. No. So you can do multiple harvesting. Depending on the crop, for example, if it is paddy, then you know, uh, paddy or wheat, then all the paddy and wheat, because you had sown it at the same time, all of them will fruit at the same time, the grains can be all plucked and it's like one season only. It's not that you will pluck all the grains and then paddy and you know, again you wait for a month, again some paddy will come out, right, and then again you pluck them, nothing like that, right. But for example, in case of chili, tomato, brinjal, most of the vegetables, right? They, they could be a difference of one week, 15 days, that after, you know, a week, maybe some more set or a batch of crops, a batch of fruits will ripen and then you pluck them while some are still small. Then again, after a week, you know, some more will ripen. So batch harvesting was also possible, repeated harvesting. Okay. I mean, fruit trees also. Even in fruits, yes, fruits, vegetables, right, this is possible. But then again, there are certain vegetables, for example, cauliflower, cabbage, it's just one time. Because one plant will only give rise to one flower and that's like one cauliflower and you pluck it. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Even, even if you see in case of, uh, you know, uh, carrot or potato, you'll have to uproot the entire potato plant to take out all the potatoes. You can't replant the potato plant back again. Similarly with carrot, you take it out once and you're done. Peanuts, you know, so it all depends from crops to crops. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So now we come to the types of harvesting. One is manual harvesting, which is still a majority of the, uh, you know, thing harvesting procedure that's been followed in India. It is done literally with your hands, with the help of a hand sickle. How does a hand sickle look? I'm sure most of you would be knowing. It's Not like this. Yeah. Like a crescent moon. Yes, it's like a crescent moon. Correct. So it's something like this and it has got a handle to hold. Ma'am, right? mm -hmm. ma we can use a scythe also. You can use a? Ma'am, scythe. A scythe. How does that look? What is the spelling of a scythe? Ma'am, S-C-Y-T-H-E. S-C-Y-T-H-E. No, ma'am, not A. Scythe, minus the A, is it? Okay. Yes, ma'am. So how does a scythe look? Ma'am, it is uh, similar to uh, sickle only, but only it has a, a long stick handle. 
Oh, okay, okay. So it, you know, it again depends from crops to crops, right? So it would basically depend, you know, what is the kind of crop that you would be harvesting. So depending on that, you can pick up the tool. But for example, in case of a pea, uh, you know, paddy, wheat and all those stuff, this is the sharp edge, right? So they would be using this to just chop, chop off from the, uh, basically from here. From here, they would all chop off, leaving behind a little bit of these, you know, intact. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So this has been a practice for long and small marginal far farmers still make use of this method. So we know that, you know, a farmer who has maybe three to five agricultural land and he's still considered to be a poor farmer, he cannot afford a machine or a tool or a vehicle uh, or a tractor kind of a thing, you know, whereby, uh, you know, electronically or through a gadget or through, you know, mechanically he can remove or harvest the crops. That's still not possible for him. You know, you must have observed, seen several videos abroad where, you know, there is a um, mechanic, mechan through mechanics, you know, they, they just, the farmer just rides on a vehicle and at any point in time, you know, he picks up just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of uh, fruits or flowers or, you know, he harvests hundreds in a second. I'm combined. Sorry? Ma'am, like combined. Yeah. So, you know, uh, for small and marginal farmers, they have to go for the manual harvesting type. Dry matured cut crops, plants are cut at the ground level and are stacked in bundles for threshing. So we will also learn today what is threshing. Okay. All right. So what is threshing basically? Arjun, will you be able to use the microphone? Amen. Ronak, you're there, I know, but I want the others also to participate. Arjun, are you there? Or Kavya? Use the mic and tell me what is threshing. Because threshing is when, uh, you know, the cr crops are taken out and hmm. when they are put tied in a bundle mm -hmm. and they're just hit, like mainly it's... Uh, you then mainly just hit on a surface, on a rock or a surface, mm. clean surface. Mm. They just hit it so that uh, separates the grain from what you call the chaff, the mm. outer part of it. And mm. Correct. So basically it's a process, it's a very, uh, it's a little tedious, but then again it's, and it's a manual process through which, you know, the grains are separated from the chaff. As simple as that, you know, through simple formula of mechanics, what happens is that the chaff is lighter, so it flies away and the grain remains intact correct so there are different ways of uh, threshing also you know at a time as kavya said you know they make small bundles bundles small enough to hold it with both their hands and they are kind of you know uh, beaten against a surface it could be a stone slab it could be a you know a rock it could be a surface you know which they have created specially for threshing Right? It could be any hard surface on which they would repeatedly beat the bundle from all sides until all the grains come out. Because let me remind you, the crops by now have become very, uh, not only mature and ripe, but they have become very dry also. And if anything is dry, you will notice you just touch them, put a little bit of pressure and it comes out. Right? So if they are beating it against a hard surface, so just imagine it will be so easy for the grain to come out of the shaft. Okay. Now bullocks, bullocks are also made to tread upon the ears full of grain as in corn, etc. Now see it is easy to remember. It is easy to remove uh, the corn, uh, the grain from the shaft in case of paddy. But in case of corn, it's a little more harder because you know the stalk is a little thick. So in that case, what they do is that they take the help of a bullock and they make, they sow. They, what they do is that they spread out the entire harvest on the ground. And they make a bullock, you know, tread upon it, as in walk upon it or move upon it. So what happens is that, you know, bullocks are quite heavy, you know. They could be, they could go up to at least 90, 100, 120 kg. So that weight it puts upon it and it kind of crushes the corn from the 
ears as in the full of grain and the uh, you know the uh, the kind of leafy kind of a dry structure which covers the corn it separates it right and the third obviously is a mechanical thresher or shellers which are used to bring out grains and also remove husk from the grains shellers are used specially for removal of husk from paddy so you know the easiest and the fastest thing is to use mechanical mechanical support but how was saying that small time farmers cannot take use of this because it consumes a lot lot of electricity these are like big machines which in a day can you know um, thresh tons and tons of grains so just imagine the, the amount of horsepower it would require to run such machines plus the space plus manpower labor you know it requires a lot of overhead cost so most of them cannot uh, you know install these kind of threshers and just imagine these threshers are just needed for maybe a week in the full year right so how do they store the thresher uh, they would have to pay rent for the premises for the entire year but just use it for a week or maybe 10 15 days so it's huge cost involved but it is very efficient you just put you know these bundles or maybe you know stacks of these uh, grains and it will not only remove the chaff from the grain but it will also remove the husk from the grain right ma'am yeah ma'am what is husk husk is basically you know when you eat rice अब जब ग्रेन्स जब देखते हो साइड में थोड़ा सा जो ब्राउनिश ब्राउनिश कलर का जो होता है ना हिलका टाइप्स दैट इज नोन एज हस्क यस बेसिकली एट द सरफेस इट कम्स ऑफ मेनी टाइम्स इट रिमेन स्टिक स्टक टू द साइड्स तो दैट इज नोन एज हस्क बेसिकली द आउटर कोटिंग स्किन यस okay so next we move on to winnowing winnowing is a very beautiful and a very indian kind of a process kirtana can you please read out what is winnowing ma'am may i okay ronak grains obtained from threshing may be having husk mm -hmm. mixed with them grains mm -hmm. are separated from husk by winnowing mm -hmm. the mixture of husk and grains is dropped from a high through a winnow husk mm -hmm. is blown off to a distance by the wind and grains being heavy fall near the pack oh. shake the grains of rice because the husk is very light it's blown by wind and the grains fall to the ground correct so basically you know when you go out for tripping and you know you see so this is basically a winnow you know which villagers use very frequently so basically they continuously and vigorously keep shaking it you know and they always stand at a height you'll have to stand at a height this is no height actually they even stand at even higher a platforms or higher places through which you know they'll get more of surface area of the wind to act on the rice or the grains and they keep and they keep shaking it left right left right continuously vigorously what happens is that because the grains are heavy the grains come and fall here whereas the chaff or the husk they fly away and they get collected at some other distance but one has to be a little wary about the direction of the wind you know so it shouldn't happen that the wind comes in such a direction that you know the husk also falls here the grain also falls here so it kind of you know mixes up once again so one has to be careful and alert about the mechanics of wind and which direction it is blowing if there is a lot of um, you know husk then as i said the person has to stand at a higher level you know at a higher level here and use the winnow because just this much of distance is not enough to take out all the husk if there is a lot of husk then you need a lot of height more the height you know the exposure to wind is more and the flying away capacity of the husk is also higher so this ah, is the okay. yes ma'am if the husk is blown by the wind won't people choke so you know they always yeah uh, no so blown away as in you will not it will not like continuously keep on blowing somewhere else it will just you know in your vicinity only it will fall it will sometime or the other it will fall down right and the average weight of the husk is such that you know most of the time in the near vicinity only it will all get collected and yes the people who are winnowing they need to cover themselves their nose and you know mouth properly 
because there are so many occupational hazards. One. Ah. Second, sorry, sorry, Ronak, one more minute. Second, the husk are not like micro, micro, micro dust. They are like, you know, long enough. Right? So the if somebody doesn't even cover one's nose or mouth, one can feel it and take it out. It's not like those minute, what we inhale is even more dangerous. You know, Kirtana, we inhale a lot of pollution. Pollutants, you know, so these don't even, we can't even see them. We can keep on engulfing us, the, the pollutants through our mouth and our nose. Jolly well and we don't even care about it. That's even worse. That's poisonous. But husk at least is not poisonous. They're not harmful. Even if you, you know, ingest a few through your nose and by mistake through your mouth, it's okay. It will not cause any harm. But of course, continuously if somebody is doing, for example, these employees out here, they will have occupational hazard. Yes, from the health problems caused during the occupation, during the means when we are working. Yeah, so irrespective respective to their work. For example, if this labor is doing winnowing year on year, every day, 365 days a year for 15 years, so the person will have, you know, problems related to winnowing. The lungs will have a problem, eyes will have a problem, throat will have a problem, must, has to happen, right? For example, you know, um, in India and also elsewhere, there were several people who were manufacturing asbestos. What is asbestos? Asbestos sheet, you know, people used to make their roof. You know, you must be seeing such undulated structures, no, which people used to make their roof. Yes, right? ma'am. So asbestos is made out of, you know, asbestos is, is a combination of cement and, you know, many, many, many other chemical substances. So it's like in a powder form and they pour the powder form to make these sheets, right? And then they sell off these sheets. So people who work in, a, in this kind of factory, they acquire an occupational hazard called asbestosis, which is kind of a severe lung disorder. Right, so that's the, how much ever mask they wear, they will have asbestos or asbestosis. This is an occupational hazard to every employee working in asbestos factories. Right, so of course they will have occupational hazard, but they have to be very careful as to with minimum exposure. Ma, yeah, yes, Rona. Man, uh, the husk is the outer uh, means coat of seed. Yes, the outer coat of seed, the chilka I said, I said, no, the chilka kind of a thing. When the uh, grain becomes ripe and dry, even the husk will become dry. So usually when they are doing the threshing, right, most of the time it should come out. But there are certain portions which still sticks around. Right, so with pressure as in repeated threshing, repeated pressure, when they put it through a bullock cart or machine, you know, it's kind of grinded and the husk completely separate. How do we eat yep. peanuts? Peanut ko hum dono haat mein rakke, we keep on, you know, uh, rubbing against each other, no? We put the peanuts in one hand on the palm and using the other palm, we crush the peanuts. So we are threshing yes. it. So we are threshing it. What happens is that the, the seed coat comes out, right? And we then have throw the seed coat, the chilka, and then we only consume the peanuts. Yes, nuts then, so the uh, size of husk or the weight of husk uh, depends on crop to crop. Yes, yes, that's the reason why paddy husk is very, very light. So a wind itself can do its work. But in case of a corn, the ears are very bigger and heavier, so they need a heavier pressure. That's the reason why they use a bullock. Yes, ma'am. Right, even when you eat peanuts, when you take out the outer, you know, covering, what do you do? You do a foo, foo, you blow air with your mouth. So what happens is that the chilka is so light, it just flies off. And then yes, what remains is the heavy nuts. And then you have the nuts. Of course, you can't do this at home. Then your mother will give you a good scolding, you know, with the peanut chilka all over the house. Yes, ma'am. Yeah.